What's up guys, it is Chris back with another watch video and today we have a really cool watch on the channel. This is Nevada Grenchen. This is a vintage brand that was sort of restarted and this is one of their most famous watches. It is the Depth Master. It was a thousand meter dive watch way back in the day and they came out with a very true recreation of this watch. I'm very excited to show it to you guys coming up next. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is a very faithful recreation of that original Depth Master. There is only one difference. This is a little bit larger. It's 39 millimeters versus the original, which was like a 37 and a half millimeter watch somewhere in that neighborhood. It's still 1000 meters of water resistance. So that original watch had 1000 meters of water resistance, which is really cool. And that was back in the 1960s, 1970s. Uh, for a watch to have that was pretty awesome. And then of course, there is a lot of similarities to that original watch. One of them I'm not too fond about. Uh, we'll get back to that in just a minute, but a really interesting offering from the brand and it's obviously a really faithful recreation and they did a really good job. So it comes in interesting packaging. So the outer box, as I showed you before, it just has a, a sort of ad for the original Depth Master, which is cool. Um, that just wraps around the uh, actual piece of paper that is, uh, is a sleeve for this watch. And then inside you get another little advertisement or it's a little bit of a description of the original Depth Master. Now this is sort of a display box, I guess. So you could pull out that top portion and then inside you could actually display your watch like this, when you get home, you could put it back on here and just put it into the display box. You get a hang tag as well, just has the name of the brand and the watch on there. That's actually made out of metal. It's actually really heavy. I'm not sure why they put that in with the watch. Uh, this was wrapped in plastic, but it could possibly scratch the watch, which I thought was interesting. Um, and here's the watch. So uh, pretty interesting little display box. I like it. It's not really a travel case or anything like that, but it's something that you could actually use at home. It's a 39 millimeter, 1000 meter dive watch. How do they do it in such a small case? You do get a helium escape valve, but it's not an incredibly thick watch when you consider the depth rating. I'm gonna actually start by doing the dimensions really quickly. Then I'm gonna do bezel action because the bezel action is really good on this watch. It's a solid piece of stainless steel. Obviously it's an all stainless steel watch. So the bezel is also made out of a solid piece of stainless steel. And usually when you get that, you get very good bezel action. Uh, so. 38.3, 38.75, depending on where I actually catch it on the case, but it's around 39 millimeters, just under 39 millimeters. At the bezel itself, you're getting 36.9 millimeters, so basically 37 millimeters at that bezel. You do have a pretty good um, uh, lug to lug on here. The lug to lug is actually pretty good at the case, but it does get male end links. So you have a 46.7 with those male end links. And again, depending on how you catch it, it's almost 53 millimeters. So it does wear larger on this bracelet. They have an option for a strap. It's actually about $200 cheaper. So, so if you don't like a beads of rice bracelet, there is another option. This is actually a really nice bracelet. Uh, it's the clasp that I think is a little bit, um, let's say dated. I guess, because they made basically a faithful recreation of the original uh, clasp. We'll get back to that in just a second though. I want to talk about the dial. This is the Pac-Man dial. They call it that because of the indices there at the uh, nine, three and six o'clock. They look like little Pac-Man, uh, obviously, and that's kind of what they've done there. And then you have an arrow, uh, hour hand, and then sort of a sword minute hand. And then you have a 12 that's sort of a stylized 12 at the 12 o'clock, everything else is triangles. Those are filled with loom and these are vintage loom filled. So you have a vintage color, um, sort of a patinaed loom. They do make versions without that. So if you don't like that, there's another version that doesn't have that. Uh, however, it doesn't have this red accent in the bezel. And I really like this red accent in the bezel. You have a milled bezel. So it's a solid piece of stainless steel. And then you have that red accent for the 15 minutes on the bezel. And then everything else is filled in with black. You have a dome sapphire crystal on here. And you can see it does distort because it's obviously thick because this is a, you know, a dive watch that has 1000 meters of water resistance. And the thickness is only 13 millimeters thick. That's including that sapphire crystal. That is excellent. Um, really, really good. And then the crown 6.3 millimeters. So you get a nice big crown 
really thin actually for the amount of depth rating that you're getting here. Uh, very, very impressive. Now they call this a baby Panerai. Uh, a lot of people call this a baby, baby Panerai and that's because of the case. It is a cushion shaped case. It sort of looks like a radiomere. Uh, actually looks a lot like a radiomere. Um, and you can see that even the case profile, the case back looks like uh, what you would get from Panerai. Very, very close to what you would get from Panerai. I'll do a close up of that and you can see on the other side of the case you get that helium escape. It's actually really well done. You wouldn't even know it's there, especially um, only if you're looking directly at it and then you still wouldn't really know what it was. Um, very, very nicely hidden. You have uh, drilled lugs, which is really nice obviously for changing straps. And then you get uh, screwed links in the actual bracelet. So that's really nice as well. So that's very upgraded actually from the original. Um, you do get a beads of rice as I mentioned. So the beads in the center are polished as typical with a beads of rice bracelet. And then the sides of the bracelet are polished. Uh, and then there is brushing that goes down the links on the top. Now the buckle itself is actually very nice. The buckle on here is a very nicely made buckle. You have a combination of polishing and brushing. It is signed right there with the brand logo. You have about four positions of micro adjust and they're actually spaced kind of odd. Um, so there's a little bit more space between these two and then there's a little less space on the on the end. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that. I'm not sure what the benefit of doing that is, but uh, interesting that they did that. And then it is the only issue that I have with this watch is the actual sort of uh, scissor here. It is pressed, so it's a fully pressed scissor. This is actually probably pressed as well, although it feels pretty thick. This is kind of disappointing and uh, and they went with a pressed element on the watch. I think I know why they did that. It's very in keeping with the original watch, which kind of makes sense if they want to keep it very original. Um, but I wish they didn't. It would have made a lot more sense to go with something that's a little bit more modern. They put screwed links in here. Obviously you upgraded this to Sapphire Crystal. You know, there's a lot of other upgrades that they made here. That was a no brainer of an upgrade. I really think they should have done that. Um, however, it's not a deal breaker. I really like the style of it. It's something that you don't see. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but like I said, you know, I, I like the idea of having uh, something that's a little bit more robust than, than a pressed piece of metal. It works and it's gonna last you as long as a milled, fully milled clasp. So it's not really a big deal again, but bezel action, very good. Let's listen to that. It's a good looking bezel. It's really sort of uh, uh, faithful to the to the original watch as well. Uh, feels really good, sounds very good as well. And uh, I just really like this watch. The sides of the watch are polished. They did a really good job. It's Swiss made, so you're getting a Swiss Salida SW200 inside. Uh, I believe that you do not get a dose, ghost state position, but I just wanna make sure that I and correct, yes, no ghost date position. So they went the extra mile and gave you a no date version of the SW200, so that is good. Very smooth action on here. Uh, crown feels really good and not very loose, uh, which I like, and that is it. So it's a screw down crown, of course, because you do have 1,000 meters of water resistance. Let me catch the threads there. It has 1,000 meters of water resistance, so uh, obviously screwed in case back, screwed in crown. Crown is signed. Um, and like I said, basically the entire side of the watch is polished and then the top is basically all brushed, uh, except for obviously the beads and the beads of rice. Very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist and we're going to talk about price and we're going to do a quick loom shot. Today I'm wearing a very weird watch. This is my, new to me, Romain Jerome. So I don't really love my Romain Jerome. I know a lot of people are going to say, why would you buy a Romain Jerome? There's a lot of reasons why I bought this watch um, and very quick reasons is because number one, it is a pretty cool looking watch. You either love it or you hate it. Uh, obviously the design is pretty out there, but this was designed by a person who actually designed pretty much all of the MBNFs that we know today, for legacy machines and their, um, their horological machines. And it's also a movement that's made by Agenor who are a brand that actually make movements for MBNF as well, and a bunch of other really awesome brands like Singer um, and Fabergé. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, with their chronograph movement, it's pretty incredible. This is a pretty incredible driver's watch. It is a linear jump hour retrograde. 
uh, hour and then a minute up here, sapphire crystal on both sides. Really great five titanium. I just I can go into this. There's a lot that goes into this watch. It's very, very cool. But very quickly, let me throw on this watch, the Depth Master. Now, this is a really cool watch. This is actually a very uh, comfortable watch, too. It looks really good on my seven and a half inch wrist. It does look smaller than 39 millimeters, in my opinion. Because of that cushion case, it wears smaller than a 39 millimeter watch. And you can see it looks good on my seven and a half inch wrist. I really like the bezel. I like that little bit of color. Um, usually I like a contrasting bezel, but I like what this looks like because it's a vintage style watch. Um, this looks the part, it really does. Um, some people wouldn't even know this was a new watch if you were wearing it. They would immediately think that this was a vintage watch. Now the price on this on a strap is $1,050, I wanna say, somewhere around there, $1,070 I think is on their website. And then it goes up to $1,200 or $1,240, somewhere around there on the Beads of Rice bracelet. Now, would I get it on the Beads of Rice bracelet? Yes, I think it's worth it. I think even though it has this pressed clasp, or elements that are pressed, I would go with the bracelet because it looks good, it feels good, it really does play the part of a vintage watch, um, and I think that's the reason why they did it. I don't think it was sort of a cost-cutting measure. I think that they actually wanted it to be more true to the original, and I think it works. They did a great job. The Pac-Man dial, the vintage loom, that red accent, really very, very nicely done. Um, I'm not sure about the loom. I believe it has Super Luminova on the hands and the indices, but we're gonna check it out. Um, like I said, 1,250 basically on this bracelet, and then it goes down to around 1,000 and change, just over $1,000 on a strap, and I think they offer this on a vintage leather strap as well. I have some straps, maybe I'll throw it on a strap so you guys can see. I think they sent me over some of the straps that this would actually go on, and I could show it to you as well. Uh, very quickly, a loom shot, and then we will wrap up the video. Loom, actually very good on here. It's pretty decently applied. I wouldn't say liberally applied, but it's decently applied to the hands and indices. Um, I really like the handset on this watch as well. I really like that arrow, uh, hour hand. It looks really good. I love the 12 at the 12 o'clock. I like the Pac-Man dial in general. I think it's really good looking. Um, interesting, sort of different from the everyday dial that you see um, with traditional sort of markers. Very cool. Uh, I like that it's no date, no date SW200, very good. It's actually a thin dive watch at 1000 meters, which is excellent. Uh, the only issue, I wouldn't even call it an issue, I hesitate to say the word issue, is the class, but that's really it. Like I said, they, they lent me this watch in. I like the watch. I think it's a good looking watch. I think it's really well made. Uh, the brand itself has changed hands a number of times over the years. It went out of business, I think in the 70s during the quartz crisis. So um, obviously this is a really well done reissue of the original. So they're trying and I think they did a really good job with this um, overall and I am impressed. Anyway, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. It's around $1,200 on a bracelet. It is more expensive than a lot of micro brand dive watches out there. However, it does have a history. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and it is a 1000 meter dive watch. It's in a 39 millimeter case with 13 millimeter thickness, which is incredible. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of this? Uh, please also don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links in by anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.